It's almost Halloween! The day where you can just roll out of bed and wear your pajamas around and say it's your costume and then have a bowl of tricks as a treat. Or if you have a lisp, Twix can be a tweet. Aside from my obvious misunderstanding of the holiday, Halloween can be a time where all the pranksters like to come out. So as a precautionary measure, I decided to make a home surveillance system to ward off those pesky phantoms of the night. As it happens, I'm a cheapskate. I'm not one to spend a lot of money on things like this, so I want to do it as cheaply as possible. Let's start with the surveillance cameras. Where can we get one of those on a budget? Gary, as it sounds, most of us carry one around in our pockets every day. Any old smartphone or tablet with a camera built in can be used as a surveillance camera. And to do that, it's as simple as downloading a free app with ads called IP Webcam, and it's available for iOS or Android. As long as the smart device is connected to your network, you can launch the app and click Start Server. When the server launches, you'll be able to see what the camera sees along with an IP address at the bottom of the screen. Typing in this IP address into any web browser will allow you to remotely view and control the camera. On its own, this is a great way to use a single camera to monitor a single location. But I want to monitor more than just a single location, so I need to set up another security camera. And this time, I'm going to go with a Raspberry Pi Zero W. Although I'm going with a Raspberry Pi, the software that I'm going to be using can be run on almost any Linux PC. So as long as you have one of those and a webcam, then you don't need a Raspberry Pi. For those of you like me going the Raspberry Pi route, the first thing that you need to do is download the latest version of Raspbian and burn it to a micro SD card using Etcher. Then let's insert it into the Pi Zero W and connect a display, mouse, keyboard, and power. Going through the automated setup, let's enter a password and connect it to our wireless. After a reboot, right click on the wireless icon and select wireless and wired network connections. Choose WLAN 0 from the drop down and give it a static IP address that you can remember. All right, now let's open up a terminal, update the repositories, and then install these prerequisite libraries. And after that's done, we can install the Motion Webcam Security Software. Then we need to make a few tweaks to the Motion Config file. So let's edit that and turn the daemon on, then turn Stream Localhost off, Output Pictures off, FFmpeg Output Movies off, Stream Max Rate set that to 50, Frame Rate let's set it to 25, make the Width 640 and the Height 480. Then save it and let's jump into the default motion file and change the start motion daemon to yes. If you're using a Raspi cam like I am, a cool night vision one to be specific, go ahead and connect it and then you'll need to edit the module setting to add BCM2835-V4L2. Save that and let's run Raspi config and then go into the interfaces and enable the camera setting. Place it in the location you want and then you can access the feed from any browser by typing in the Pi static IP address that we set followed by colon 8081. All right, so now we have two different webcams, but we also have two separate interfaces for monitoring them. So now we need something like a command center where we can view and control all of our webcams from a single interface. The program that can help us achieve that is called Motion iOS, and it's available for Raspberry Pi, Orange Pi, Banana Pi, and man, I'm hungry. On its GitHub page under latest releases, you can download the image for your flavor of device. Then after burning it to a micro SD card and putting it in the Pi, all you have to do is connect an ethernet cable and if you want, another camera and a temporary display and then power it on. The display will tell you the IP address to connect to so that we can set it up. Log in with the username admin and no password. If you opted to connect a camera to the Pi, you should see that feed already. Then if you click on the icon in the upper left under general settings, you'll see an option to change the admin password, which I highly recommend. Right above that, you'll see an option to turn on advanced settings. Doing this will give you advanced options like connecting it to wireless, changing the file storage for saving, editing the text overlays, and then editing the motion detection settings. When you've got it set the way you want it, click the apply button at the top and then let it reboot. After you've logged back in, click the menu button again, and at the very top of the panel is a drop-down box that will give you the option to add a new camera. Let's add our Pi camera first. For camera type, I chose Simple MJPEG Camera, and typed in the URL followed by 8081. 
Everything else should be default, so I just clicked OK. To add the smartphone camera, I selected to add another new camera and then set it to simple MJPEG as well. Then I entered the IP address of the smartphone followed by 8080 slash video and then clicked OK. And there you have it, all in stock and ready to rock. And as an added bonus, every time it detects motion, it saves it to the Pi's micro SD card. Now we can monitor our majestic domain from the comfort of our own lair and catch those hooligans red handed. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.